The most basic of all human needs is the need to understand and to be understood. The best way to understand people is to listen to them. But first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever had trouble hearing someone in a noisy room or struggled to follow conversation on the phone? If so, you are not alone. Hearing loss is a common problem that can affect people of all ages. It can have a significant impact on your quality of life. And that's where Pearton audiometry comes in. This simple and non-invasive test is one of the most widely used tools for evaluating hearing and it can provide valuable information about the health of your ears and your ability to hear different frequencies of sound. So if you are interested in learning more about Pearton audiometry and how it can help with the diagnosis and treatment of hearing loss, keep watching. Okay, let's get started with the introduction first. Why it is called pure tone audiometry? It's called pure tone because it uses the sound of a single frequency at a time. Audiometer is a device that produces the sound of a particular frequency. You can increase or decrease the intensity, that is the loudness of that particular frequency of the sound by 5 decibel to interpolate it in an audiogram. That's the graph that we get after plotting frequency versus intensity. The frequency is on the x-axis whereas intensity is on the y-axis and this overall process is called audiometry. We'll look at the graph later but first understand let's understand how the audiometry is done pure tone audiometry is done in a soundproof room inside the soundproof room we have the patient here you can see in the picture and the examiner is outside of that room but they are separated by this transparent glass where the examiner can see the patient and the patient can also see the examiner through this transparent glass but in this scenario when the patient can see the examiner then he can have idea when the examiner is pressing the audiometer to produce the sound and that can create some kind of bias in the result so we can ask the patient to look in the other direction so that he do not really have any idea when the examiner is pressing the button and he raise the hand only in case he actually listening otherwise he can trick the examiner by just raising his hand even if he is not actually listening at first we test for the air conduction and after that we test for the bone conduction air conduction is tested by using the headphone whereas the bone conduction is tested by using oscillator over the master process air conduction is tested for different frequencies 125 250 500 and up to 8000 frequency uh, up to 8000 hertz sorry audiometer produces this frequency of the sound and it can also change the intensity of the sound for a particular frequency let's say for 125 hertz frequency we can produce sound of different intensity we can increase or decrease the loudness right after testing the ear conduction we test for the bone conduction from uh, 250 to 4000 hertz right the patient is asked to raise the hand when he perceive the sound that's why i was saying if we ask the patient to look in the other direction that decreases the bias otherwise even though he is not listening he may raise the hand now we have to understand few terminology what is threshold pure tone average and airborne gap for us to understand this we have to first look at the graph and then we'll come back to this slide okay and this is how an audiogram looks like or the audiograph looks like this graph consists of several boxes on the x-axis i want you to look here on the x-axis we have the frequency in hertz that is shrillness or sharpness of the sound hertz simply refers to the number of cycles that the sound waves make in one second 125 hertz means the sound waves makes 125 cycles in one second right and similarly we test up to 8000 hertz but uh, our normal conversion range is somewhere from 500 to 2000 hertz right over the y-axis we have the intensity of sound the audiometer is so calibrated that our normal hearing the for normal hearing the graphs will come somewhere around the zero decibel but zero to 20 decibel this refers intensity refers to loudness so we do not need the sound to be too loud for our ear to hear we can hear the smallest of the sound right so for some people they require very high sound or a loud sound for them to actually hear you may have seen some people watching television at very high volume or listening music at very high volume right they may have some kind of hear problem but for a normal ear it can hear sound of zero decibel or uh, less than 20 decibel right but if you require sound to be loud enough let's say 60 decibel you require sound to be 60 decibel for you to hear then that's a problem right and for a different frequency let's say for one to 25 hertz we start air conduction testing but for bone conduction we start from 250 hertz right let's say for a 250 hertz you can you cannot hear a sound of 10 decibel you cannot hear a sound of 20 decibel you cannot hear a sound of 30 decibel but you can hear a sound of 40 decibel and you can hear the sound that is louder than 40 decibel this is just an example not a real condition this is just an example so if you can hear the sound 40 decibel and louder than that for a sound of 250 hertz frequency then 
for you for that frequency for 250 hertz 40 decibel is the threshold right that's the minimum intensity of the sound that you can hear for that frequency let's take another example let's say for 1000 hertz you can hear the sound of 30 decibel and louder but you cannot hear a sound less than 30 decibel you cannot hear 20 decibel you cannot hear 25 decibel let's say then that means the threshold for thousand hours is 30 decibel but for a normal ear at any frequency at any frequency you can hear sound that is less than 20 decibel if you can hear sound uh, from 0 to 25 decibel then that's not a significant degree of impairment but if you require sound minimum to be 26 decibel for you to hear at any frequency then from 26 to 40 decibel that's a mild degree of hearing loss and the degree of hearing loss you can look at the chart by yourself but if you require sound to be louder than 90 decibel then that's a profound hearing loss now let's come back to this slide the threshold for hearing loss the minimum intensity at which the sound is heard is called the threshold for that particular intensity we already discussed by taking the example uh, the minimum intensity for uh, 250 hertz according to our example was 40 decibel right but in a normal patient this is less than 20 decibel now pure tone average we plot the threshold of hearing for a different frequency let's take a hypothetical patient right we have a patient uh, whose threshold for 500 hertz let's say just an example whose threshold for 500 hertz is 30 decibel just an example and whose threshold for 1000 hertz is 35 decibel and whose threshold for 2000 hertz is 40 decibel so 30 35 40 right for 500 1000 and 2000 hertz so what's the average of this intensity 30 35 and 40 the average is 35 right you can add them and divide them by 3 that's 35 decibel right so that's the average we took the average of 500 1000 and 2000 hours because the conversation our normal day-to-day -day conversation occurs in this frequency right we took the average of the air conduction we can plot air as well as bone conduction in this graph we'll discuss later how we plot air as well as bone conduction but uh, the average that we are talking recently is about the air conduction the threshold for the air conduction the threshold for air and bone conduction are different we can have different types of hearing loss and from the graph we can figure out what type of hearing loss we do have now air bone gap now to understand airborne gap we have to understand about what are the different things that we plot in this graph we already discussed that at first we'll test for air conduction and then only we go for the bone conduction because there are two different types of hearing loss conductive hearing loss and sensory neural hearing loss right conductive hearing loss we have problem in conduction through the external or middle ear but in sensory neural hearing loss our inner ear we have pathology in the inner ear and we have decreased air as well as bone conduction but in case of conductive hearing loss bone conduction is not affected only the air conduction is affected so we plot both air and bone conduction in this graph and we have index here if you look at the bottom right we have the index here we use a red color to represent right ear and a blue color to represent the left ear right r for red are for the right and blue color is for the left ear now let's say we have a portion let's take an example how we plot we use circle for air conduction in the right ear we use cross for the left ear in case of bone conduction we use this less than symbol in case of right ear we use greater than symbol for the left ear right and then we plot by this symbol circle or cross we can figure out right or left ear even in case the graph is given in a black and white print right now we plot air or bone conduction and air conduction we join these by a continuous line in case of air conduction whereas for bone conduction we represent it by a dotted line okay now let's come back here the difference between threshold of air conduction and the threshold for bone conduction after plotting air conduction and bone conduction in this graph the gap between air conduction and the bone conduction that should be less than 15 decibel the gap between air and bone conduction more than 15 decibel suggest conductive hearing loss well this might have sound complicated but it's not that complicated once we start looking at the graph uh, we have a graph here but before going through the graph let's discuss about some of uses of pure tone audiogram this is used to identify the degree of hearing loss we have already discussed that if we can hear sound that above 20 decibel 0 to 20 decibel then that's a normal finding but if you cannot hear sound that's any less louder than 90 decibel or you require sound to be louder than 90 decibel for you to hear then that's a profound hearing loss right and not just degree what type of hearing loss is it it is it helps you to identify the type of hearing loss as well airborne gap more than 15 suggests that's the conductive hearing loss and um, based on the degree of hearing loss we can prescribe the hearing aid 
We can also use this audiogram as a record for the future medical legal defense and we can also predict hearing improvement after ear surgery by using the audiogram. Now let's go through some of the audiograms. This is not the real audiogram. This is just something that I made. We have already discussed that above 20 decibel, above 20 decibel, that's our normal hearing. We discussed that red color represent right ear, blue color represent left ear, right? We have discussed about this. Now dotted line represent bone conduction. Continuous line represent air conduction. Air conduction in right ear is represented by a circle, whereas bone conduction in right ear is represented by this less than sign, right? Air conduction in left ear is represented by a cross, whereas bone conduction in left ear is represented by this greater than sign, correct? Now, if you look at the right ear in this graph, air conduction is normal, right? This air conduction is normal and the bone conduction is also normal. So the right ear is normal. But if you look at the left ear, in the left ear air conduction is decreased. How you can say so? It has to be above 20 decibel for it to be normal. But since both air and bone conduction are below 20 decibel, that means there is some pathology. Air conduction is decreased bone conduction is also decreased. Whenever there is a decrease in air and bone conduction below 20 decibel, then that means there is a sensory neural hearing loss. If you want to know if there is also conductive hearing loss, then we have to look for the air and bone gap. So in case of right ear, it's normal. We do not need to calculate. But in case of left ear, if you look here, I don't think that the gap is more than 15. The gap is less than 15 decibel. And since the gap is not more than 15 decibel, it's a sensory neural hearing loss and not a conductive hearing loss. Because sometimes there can be mixed hearing loss. So you need to calculate the airborne gap as well. And in particular, there is a high degree of sensory neural hearing loss for the lower frequency. Low frequency sensory neural hearing loss. This is seen in many years disease, right? Meniere's disease has this kind of graph. Now, what are the different questions that you may get regarding Meniere's disease? You may get the questions regarding the symptoms and the treatment of Meniere's disease. What are the clinical presentation? What are the symptoms, treatment? It presents with vertigo, hearing loss, tinnitus, right? And unilateral sensory and neural hearing loss. Now, let's calculate what is the average, what decibel of hearing loss you have. We look at the intensity of the sound for the 500, 1000 and 2000 hours, right? And we calculate the average based on air conduction of this. We do not look at the bone conduction. We calculate based on air conduction. So let's say this is somewhere around 60 or whether this is more than 60. I don't know. Let's take an example. Let's say this is somewhere around 55 for 500 hours, 55 decibel. For 1000 decibel, it's 50 decibel. And for 2000 hours, let's say it's 45. So 45, 50, 55, 45, 50, 55. That means the average is going to be, if you add this 45, 50, 55 and divide it by 3, then that's average is 50 decibel. So we have a 50 decibel hearing loss. You cannot hear the sound that's lower than 50 decibel for air conduction. And based on the WHO classification of hearing loss, 50 decibel hearing loss is moderate, right? That's a moderate. This person has a moderate sensory neural hearing loss in the left ear, but the right ear is normal. Now look at this graph, red color, right ear, above 20 decibel, so both air and bone conduction are normal in the right ear. But if you look at the left ear, blue color, air conduction is decreased, this continuous line. Continuous line represents air conduction, whereas the bone conduction, dotted line, air conduction is decreased, whereas the bone conduction is normal. That means there is a conductive hearing loss. In the conductive hearing loss, if you uh, remember the Rene's finding, bone conduction is greater than air conduction, right? Bone conduction is preserved because during bone conduction, it bypasses external and middle ear, right? So this is an example of conductive hearing loss. And even the airborne gap, this is air conduction and this is the bone conduction. Airborne gap is more than 15 decibels. So this is a left side dead conductive hearing loss. What can give uh, this kind of graph? Any causes of pathology in the external or the middle ear, in the left ear, of course, because this is the example of left ear, right? So left-sided conductive hearing loss. Okay, look at this graph. What do you think this is? Left ear, it's normal, above 20 decibel. But for the right ear, both air conduction and bone conduction is decreased, right? Air conduction is represented by this continuous line and the bone conduction is represented by this dotted line. Both air and bone conduction in the right ear is decreased. That means it's a sensory neural hearing loss. But now let's check the air bone gap. Don't you think this is more than 15 decibel? Well, I do think it's somewhere around 60 in the range of 60. It's somewhere around the range of 40 or less than 40. So 40, 60, that's obviously more than 20. So it is a case of mixed hearing loss because there is sensory neural hearing loss and the air one gap is also more than 15. That means sensory neural as well as conductive hearing loss. It's a mixed hearing loss in the right ear, whereas left ear is normal. Now, 
this graph what do you think about this this is an interesting graph look at the left ear in the left ear bone conduction is normal but the air conduction is decreased normal bone conduction but decreased air conduction this is classical for conductive hearing loss right in the sensory neural hearing loss both of them are decreased so this is conductive hearing loss in the left ear in the right ear bone conduction is normal air conduction is decreased again there is conductive hearing loss in the right ear as well right but there is something interesting if you look at the right ear bone conduction of the right ear there is a notch at the frequency of 2000 hertz right this type of notch is called Carhartt's notch right and this is seen in the case where there is stiffening of the ear ossicles and the condition is called otosclerosis it is one of the cause of conductive hearing loss what might be the case if you look at the right ear bone conduction is normal except at 2000 hours right in the left ear bone conduction is normal except at 2000 hours air conduction of both ear is decreased so in both ear there is conductive hearing loss and this notch again at 2000 hours frequency this is called Carhartt's notch and this is seen in autosclerosis right so there is autosclerosis in both left and right ear now you may get a question regarding autosclerosis what might be the question you may get a question regarding the management of this condition right now let's look at this graph air conduction bone conduction of both left and right ear continuous line for air conduction both left and right ear is normal bone conduction normal except at 4000 hertz at 4000 hertz very sudden deepening there is a notch again the notch at 4000 hours is specific for noise induced hearing loss there is hearing loss in the higher frequency not in the higher frequency but at 4000 hours the consonants like s th f this type of sounds are missing right and this is the second most common type of hearing loss worldwide very common so this graph is important notch at 4000 hours in both air and bone conduction if you look at this there is a notch at 2000 hours here 4000 hours not notch at 2000 hours in the bone conduction only here both air and bone conduction so there's a difference pay attention now this graph okay this graph represent one of the most common the most common cause of hearing loss worldwide presbycosis or age related hearing loss if you look at the graph clearly then the air conduction for both right ear and left ear is normal except at higher frequency and the bone conduction for both right ear and left ear is normal except at higher frequency you have a high frequency hearing loss what type of hearing loss sensory neural right because the air bone gap is less than 15 so high frequency sensory neural hearing loss this is bilateral high frequency sensory neural hearing loss in both ears is related hearing loss it's not specific but uh, is related hearing loss presbycosis has this type of graph but this may also be seen in use of autotoxic drugs as well now this graph again in the left ear air conduction and bone conduction both are normal but on right ear there is again high frequency sensory neural hearing loss right because both air and bone conduction are decreased both of them are decreased and the air bone gap is less than 15 unilateral sensory neural hearing loss unilateral high frequency sensory neural hearing loss this is seen in conditions where there is tumor may be seen in acoustic neuroma uh, these are some of the common origams that you see in the oski and i hope this will be helpful thank you